most uh, marriages between an instrumentalist and the instrument are no better than most marriages. And getting them to be really one together it takes a, a lot of effort for a start. Is that really the instrument they want to play? Very often it's what they've been forced to do by a teacher, by this one, by that one. A typical example, which I've seen on a number of occasions, is that uh, the first child is given the violin. The next one is given the cello. And he always wants to play the violin. So he'll love playing the high notes on the cello, but will hate playing the low notes, which of course is where the cello's power and body and character is. I remember once working with four little primary school kids playing cellos in a little school orchestra. And three of them hated the, the cello. They wanted to play the violins like the elders. But the fourth one, no, I love it. He's playing, I do frog, and he's, he's loving it. And so uh, every, and no one wants to play the viola, maybe one or two. They always want to play the violin, but they're given the viola because they came late to class or because too many, uh, they didn't have enough violins for them and so on. Uh, my, my Susan had the same problem. She's a high soprano. She comes to string lessons, they give her a viola. Within a week, she's in glasses. She doesn't want to see it. And so uh, it's, it's sometimes, and very often, the instrument they choose is the one that they feel, um, how can I put it? They feel uh, like, like drawn to for some peculiar reason. We've seen a rock star play it, or it's not really what they want to play. You know? And so, I'll tell you one thing which I feel strongly about, is that, for example, um, a flute is almost, in many ways, a, ch a, a, a child's instrument. Because as an adult, you can't use power and expression and passion because you can overblow it so easily. So you find flutists, they're always very precise people, but they tend to be inhibited. For start, they're precise people. Then they tend to be inhibited because they can't put themselves into it. You just can't blow it like a trumpet, for example, you know? So every instrument has its uh, positive characteristics and its negative uh, side. Well, think of a piano, uh, a concert grand. The, the, the pianist hardly hears. It's all going to the audience. The, so when we, when we adjust it so that the pianist gets some sound back, how much happier they are. Think of the concert, the concert grand with the lid. Now, uh, when the lid's wide open, they feel better. When the lid comes down, they feel castrated, cut off, inhibited. So very often in a concert, like we were at a week or two ago, the violin and a, and a accompanist, a penis. And he has it on what's called a short stick. And that's how he feels. His stick has been made short. He's, as it were, castrated. There's no power. He has to learn how to have the lid up and play quietly as an, as an accompanist, not as a soloist. So they're the more superficial things. Then, uh, well, there's so much just where to position it in the room and all, all sorts of things. But um, every instrument can be optimised for the life energy that, that it can, that it can uh, give. Every instrument. Most instruments are, are, are just not made with that, with that loving sort of uh, respect but this is, this is like a living thing there, and it's wanting to give all of this. And, 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 and is it able to? Not only because of how it's being played, but also because of, in a sense, how it's been made. A, a, a typical example are the F holes on a violin, or, or, or another string instrument, or, or say the, the, the whole 
the sound hole on a guitar. Now, think of a violinist. I, I've, I've, I've watched violin makers at work and they, they never use sandpaper because sandpaper takes off, they say, the highs and the lows. They use little tiny planes and they can spend ages planing just the faceplate of a violin. Now, suppose they make the F hole just a little too big. They've wasted maybe months of work. The same with the guitar. They never make it quite as big as it could be. So I go with the viola, violin, cello, bass, and you make it just a little bit bigger, a little tiny. All of a sudden, oh, there it is. So, and there's so many things to do. The, the, the tension of the bow hairs in a, in a, in a bow, the, 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 the type of rosin that's used and how much. There's so, 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 so much. Just think of a cello has four uh, keys. And there's one that either sticks in the cellist's neck or else they're frightened that it will stick in their neck. If you just make that peg flat, they lose their fear, they sit differently, they play differently. There's, um, and but a violin is what I love working with most because there's so much to do. I, just recently, I saw a woman who's just spent a lot of money getting a very special chin rest. Very highly recommended. Very, very beautifully made everything. And I've heard her play a few hundred times. She has this new chin rest on, she says, it feels so comfortable. I said, but the instrument's gone dead. It's absolutely dead. Why? What can it be? It fits so beautifully. I've, I've done a lot of work with her, the violin. But what do we discover? There's a little tiny uh, thin layer of, felt, of, of cork between the chin rest and the violin. And that, that cork is deadening the sound. You take that out, and she says, oh, it's so different. And, and adjusting it, take, take the chin rest and the shoulder rest. When that's right, there is a particular meridian problem which relates to a particular type of fear. And when th this when all this is not adjusted right, they're constantly fearing, I'm going to lose the violin, it's going to fall out of my grip, so I have to grip it so hard. But when have all this adjusted nicely, and it just sits there friendly, they lose their fear. Then how do you rotate the violin? Because this ear, the left one, is so much more than the right. This, there is a phase difference with the transmission of the sound the distance the sound has to travel to each ear. So you, you adjust that direction as much as possible to until they feel comfortable uh, uh, with that. Um, and of course, adjusting the F holes, tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. And all of a sudden, a sensitive musician, and, and musicians are sensitive, they believe in and respond to fine discrimination. They'll suddenly say, oh, it's never sounded like that before. 